Thank you to those who've just joined us. Uh, you're at the Waynesburg Business Roundtable for March, and we'll wait just one more minute to allow those uh, who are still trying to get in to join us. Thank you. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Williamsburg Business Roundtable sponsored by the Economic Development Authority. Uh, this is our 136th Business Roundtable uh, and our 12th Virtual Roundtable. And we've continued to offer this service even through this very strange last year uh, remotely. But we do hope when the governor allows that we'll be back together in person. We're very pleased that you've taken time to join us today. Uh, the webinar is being recorded so you can call in for audio or view it at your convenience. My name is Rick Overy. I'm the chairman of the EDA, uh, local business owner and host. Um, in a minute, we'll hear from our speaker. And at the conclusion, uh, we'll have our city economic development director, Michelle DeWitt, who will uh, provide uh, highlights of some of the resources that we continue to provide to our city businesses. We anticipate that the whole program will last 30 to 40 minutes. We wanna make an efficient use of your time and we're very grateful that you've chosen to join us uh, here today. This new year has started off much like we ended last year with many businesses closed down, although uh, now that we're past the January and February season, hopefully we can see the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm hoping for a much better season for the city of Williamsburg than we had last year. Uh, but this is not a normal year, and we recognize that things are still very difficult for many in our business community, particularly those in the hospitality industry, uh, tourism, uh, and uh, particularly the, hosp the uh, hotels and restaurants. So we are trying to continue to provide uh, outstanding support for those businesses, and many of you have taken advantage of the myriad uh, grant programs that we have offered through the locality, uh, through the region, and through the state. This is usually our most popular presentation, uh, and that is our economic outlook. And this year, we're really pleased to have Chris Chimura uh, join us. She is a uh, regional and uh, statewide and national expert and has, uh, through her company, provided analytics uh, to many companies as well as uh, the state um, through um, a number of presentations. And, we're really uh, grateful, Chris, that you would join us and that you've really honed in on the impact of the tre tremendous difficulty we've had through the economic crisis on our region and hopefully give us some uh, positive outlook going forward. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris. And again, thank you so much for being with us today and your time and expertise. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. I'm happy to be here. And um, let me show share my screen. There we go. All right. Um, can I have a thumbs up? You can see my screen. Okay, That's great. Thank you, Rick. All right. Okay. So I do have some positive news. Um, here I'll be giving the national outlook first, and then we'll look at Williamsburg. Um, in terms of the nation, though, starting though, we um, went into a recession starting in February. In terms of GDP, it was quick. Um, it was very deep and the rebound has been large. In terms of employment, it's much different. 
um, employment levels when we get back to more normal pre-COVID times is going to vary by industry. And it's, um, of course, we need the vaccine before people will feel comfortable going out and spending and being nearer to people. For the city of Williamsburg, um, the unemployment rate, which is based on place of residence, was slightly higher than the state. The employment growth, which is based on people who work in the city, um, you're going to have a faster COVID rebound than the state, partially due to your mix of industries. And in the long term, um, at least with your current mix of industries, we're expecting um, the employment growth to be slower um, than the state and nation overall. So beginning with the nation, um, going into this recession, the economy was fundamentally strong. And here I'm showing you three indicators, gray shaded areas are recessions. And most places across the world, most countries define a recession as two consecutive drops in GDP. But here in the U.S., we have this group called the National Bureau of Economic Research, and they define recession dates based on monthly data. So here are three of the data points that they look at. Employment, you can see that when we went into this recession, we lost all the jobs that were created over the um, prior expansion. Um, within a couple of months, we were had regained 50% of the jobs that we lost. Uh, it flattened out a bit, um, but last month in January, we saw a pretty good increase, a little bit over 300,000. Um, on the right-hand side, you're looking at uh, consumption, that is spending by consumers on goods and services. In red, this is very important because consumers make up about 60 to 70 percent of GDP. Huge drop-off because we were told not to um, go out um, and to distance. And then we saw that coming back fairly quickly, faster than most economists had expected. On the right-hand side, income spike because of the CARES Act and the fiscal stimulus that was provided um, very quickly. And now we're back down to more normal levels. But as we know, with the new fiscal stimulus coming, expected to come, we're going to see this uh, income number spike again. On the industrial production side, um, this is output of manufacturing, um, construction, utilities, mining. You can see the rebound, the big drop off and the rebound getting closer to year over year um, levels of employment, of, of um, output growth. Now, looking at the um, GDP, on the left hand side, you see the Great Recession and how long that lasted. Um, and on the right hand side, you see the COVID recession that was very um, dramatic in terms of the decline um, here. But we've also had a uh, almost equal rebound of about 30%. Um, and then um, last quarter of last year, we almost made it up to 5%. In terms of a forecast, we're looking for something uh, just short of 5% in the first quarter of this year, and then about 5%. Um, most economists, uh, of course, vary on how much growth they expect to see. The one thing we all agreed on, that it would be sharp and short and not sustained in terms of the decline. Um, anytime we have GDP growth greater than 2.5%, that's considered very strong. So second half of this year should be extremely strong, and uh, next year as well should be strong in terms of GDP growth. So the economic recovery is dependent on us getting to herd immunity so that we can go out and um, not have to wear masks or not have to wear them as much and be around more people. And uh, just to provide a summary of where we've come from, Typically, it takes five to 10 years to create a vaccine. And within a year, we had nine vaccines in phase three trials. Seven of them were partially funded by the US government. Um, the trials lasted for several months. And then typically, you don't mass produce a vaccine until it passes FDA. So the um, uh, federal government worked out a deal, um, HHS and Department of Defense agreed to um, fund Moderna and several other firms to manufacture those doses, even though we didn't yet know whether they would pass um, FDA approval. And now um, we're waiting to get back to herd immunity. So I never thought as an economist that I would be relying on so much health information to drive our forecast, but that's exactly what we're doing. Last year it was all forecast was based around when will we get the vaccine, and now um, um, we're looking at a herd immunity. When will we get that? And we have a model that I'll show you in a minute with regard to that. 
So um, three scenarios. This is employment indexed to 100 prior to COVID. So the way to read this is that uh, employment on average dropped off about 12%, so it varies by industry um, before it started coming back. We now have actual data through the end of last year, so that's at this point. And then we have our three scenarios that um, diverge here. Uh, the most likely is the vaccine widely distributed as the second quarter, which um, is exactly what um, the president is, is calling for at this point in time. If we were to get that, then we'd see COVID, um, pre-COVID employment levels, say the first, second quarter of 2022. If we have the slow um, case where maybe these variants pop up and slow things down or we have logistical problems, the vaccine is not um, uh, widely distributed until the third quarter of 2022, then we wouldn't get back to uh, pre-COVID levels until 2023. Or the um, fast case is if we were to get um, the vaccine in the first quarter, um, then we see employment at pre-COVID levels in 2021. Of course, the fast case um, looks um, somewhat unlikely now, but some, um, some places such as New York City are given the vaccine 24-7 right now. So you can sign up for anywhere from one to five o'clock in the morning or any time of the day uh, to get a vaccine. So there are some encouraging things going on in terms of um, getting the vaccines out. So now I'm gonna show you a series of charts. This is very messy and I'll try to um, peel things away to help. Um, but again, here we're looking at um, uh, employment index to 100 pre-COVID. And then we're looking at these separate industries. So we've done analysis at a detailed level. So in, um, instead of just manufacturing, we looked at what would employment look like in vehicle manufacturer, um, rubber products, or pharmaceuticals. And then we summed it up um, to get it to the major sector, um, such as manufacturing here. So now looking at um, the data here, and again, it's actual data through the end of, of last year. So this is the point of actual data. Arts and entertainment and recreation, important in your region a huge drop, almost 50% decline in employment uh, through the second quarter. And now it's coming back. It's only down 25% um, from where it was pre-COVID. In green, another very important sector um, industry for your um, economy in the city of Williamsburg, accommodation and food services dropped off. And again, it's starting to come back. Um, here in contrast, at the top, agriculture, forestry, fishing and hunting, dropped off 5% in terms of employment and then shot right back up to 5% above COVID levels um, and a little bit further above that. And then we expect it to be fairly flat um, going forward. Now, um, peeling off some of those um, larger declines so that we could see some of what the other um, industry sectors are doing. In red now, other services. So those would be things like salons or barbershops, photographers, in green is um, mining, quarrying, gas extraction. And so you can see those numbers were staying pretty low here, I would guess because of uh, not as many people um, driving. So uh, the demand for gas and, um, is not as great as it had been uh, prior to COVID. Uh, the dark blue here is administrative and support um, and waste management remediation services. So this is support services for offices and buildings, such as landscaping. Now, um, peeling back further, here now we're looking at the biggest drop is only 15%, and that's in retail. And again, uh, the, it, retail would vary greatly depending on the type of uh, retail firm. Um, for grocery stores, of course, didn't decline as much. Hardware stores actually saw some increases. Department stores saw greater declines. But notice in this case, that once we get, um, once we go out in terms of our forecast, we never do get back to the pre-COVID levels um, because we've seen a switch going to, um, from going to retail spending inside big boxes and stores to online. Um, the black, dark black here is the information industry. So a lot of computer IT could be done from home. So we didn't see as much of a decrease in that um, industry. And then the brown here, uh, public administration. So that would be um, government where it increased, then we saw a decrease, and then 5% above a year ago. 
um, in terms of public administration or government type of positions. Um, now, let me actually go back one more here. Okay, that's agriculture. Well, I covered that already. So in red, now this final slide, we're looking at manufacturing activity um, off only about 8%. Uh, the yellow is showing you construction. And of course, we've had a boom in residential um, uh, building, and you can see we hit the pre-COVID levels and then continue to grow. Uh, the green line is showing you finance and insurance. Much of that work could be done from home, and so it didn't decline as much. And then professional, scientific, and technical uh, was down, um, again, uh, less than 5% here at, at the lowest point. A lot of this could be done from home. And then we see it growing into the future as we get to the pre-COVID levels. This is an, an important sector for you because it's become increasingly, although it's still small, it's become a larger part of your economy, which is, is good. So herd immunity, when will we get there? So we have a model that we've been running and really almost on a daily or every other day basis. And if you want to get more information on it, you can click on this um, and I'll provide these um, slides so that you can have them and uh, click on that if you'd like to get more information. But here we also have uh, three scenarios. And basically we're looking for herd immunity. So that's getting to 80% of the population has the vaccine. Um, late summer, that would be in August for the optimistic and September for the most likely scenario. Um, and in terms of Virginia, Virginia's tracking ahead of the nation. Um, in terms of herd immunity in August, um, let's see, uh, I'm sorry, Virginia's ranked 24th in first doses administered, that's 18.6% of Virginians uh, versus 18.1 in the U.S. and 15% have received their second doses. So, um, I'm sorry, 10.3% uh, have received their second doses compared to 9.5 in the U.S., so that ranks us 15th. So again, we're ranked 24th for first doses, 15th for second doses, and we would expect um, Virginia to uh, get to herd immunity about the same pace as we expect the U.S. So that's either August in the optimistic or September in the most likely cases. So that's all great news if we can just wait until then. Um, so um, some assumptions here, I won't go over all of this, but you can click on the link if you want more detail. 600 million total vaccines have been purchased from Moderna, another 100 million from Johnson & Johnson. As of March 8, over 60 million Americans have received their first dose, and we're currently administering 2.2 million doses a day. 80% um, is the threshold that many um, scientists point toward, and um, over time we have seen the percentage of people willing to take the vaccine increasing the latest numbers for February are that 77% of individuals are willing to take the vaccine. So with that, now down to the city of Williamsburg. Big picture, the U.S. economy GDP is rebounding very quickly. Employment is coming back. And um, we would expect uh, this year in terms of GDP uh, to be a very good one, especially the second half of next year, to be a very good year in terms of GDP growth. So. Um, here again, everything we're looking at is for the city of Williamsburg and the gray shaded areas are recessions. When we look at your total employment numbers, you can see that um, in the, uh, going back to 2002, from 2002 through 2008, you saw a decline going from nearly 20,000 to about 14,000 jobs. And then since then, uh, you've increased a little bit, held steady and of course, we've seen a, a quite a significant drop off um, during the COVID recession. A combination of food service was a driver of that decline. So you see going from about 6,000 in 2002 down to a uh, little less than 4,000 in uh, 2011. Uh, on the other hand, a, a big positive, professional scientific and technical services You've seen very strong growth between 2016 and 2018, and this will show up in some of the numbers later. This is a, a high-paid sector, um, and so that's very positive uh, for the city. Um, so when we look at annual average wages, uh, we see an increase 
from 2002 from $25,000 up to $45,000. And again, it's the changing industry mix that has caused that. Uh, accommodation and food services, um, of course, a lot of part-time workers, so it pays less. Uh, professional scientific pays a lot more, and I'll show you that in just a minute. And here now I'm just showing you wages, the year-over-year -year pace. Uh, relative, so City of Williamsburg is the blue shaded area, and the blue line is Virginia. The black line is the U.S. So you can see, especially during that period where we saw a lot of professional business services growing, you saw your wages growing a lot faster than the U.S. or the nation. And um, interestingly, in the nation and the U.S., we've seen an uptick in wages in part because, again, some of the people who have been paid off that can't social, who have been laid off that can't social distance would be those at retail or, or restaurant food stores that get paid less than people who work in offices who can work from home. So we've seen uh, an increase in um, the wages over the last couple of quarters. And of course, you can see that your wages have increased even faster than what we saw in the U.S and in um, Virginia. Um, another thing that uh, we've seen in your region over the past couple of decades is that you've become more diverse. So here I'm showing you the unemployment rate, and I purposely showed you the not seasonally adjusted unemployment rate. And um, what you're seeing is back in the 1990s, look at these huge swings in unemployment, and they became smaller in 2000 and even smaller now um, this is because of your dependence on the tourism industry, restaurants, et cetera, where you saw a lot of um, layoffs during the non-tourism time. And now, of course, uh, with other, um, other industries being more important or uh, a larger piece of your overall economy, um, your seasonality has become a little bit more like what we see in Virginia. Um, You've seen um, very good, even though employment growth has declined, you've seen very good population growth. And so here I've indexed it back to 2010 and comparing the city of Williamsburg to um, Virginia. Virginia's population is up about 7% over this time, and you're up uh, about 9% over this time. However, if we break it out by age group, age 55 and plus, grew 35%, that's the total amount over that period of time, compared to 27% in Virginia. Um, now going to COVID. So here's your employment um, pre-COVID. Uh, this is our estimate of what we expect you to see in terms of the decline, that is 1,534 jobs lost um, due to COVID. Uh, when we look at food services and accommodation, here again, pre-COVID, and our estimated decline is 894 or almost 900 jobs lost um, due to COVID. And then you could see um, the rebound here. Um, now, when we look at all the major sectors, so here are all the major sectors uh, that we look at when we're looking at employment. Um, and I've rank ordered these by size. So education is the largest employing nearly um, 2,000, well, nearly 2,900. Accommodation follows with 2,800, and then health services and retail trade. But let me take you to the bottom first. Um, all the way to the right is the annual average growth rate, 3%. Now, this is your COVID-related rebound in the U.S. and in Virginia. It's less than that, around 2 to 2.5%. Two and the reason why you're seeing a bigger rebound is because some of the your some of the jobs that were lost are more concentrated in those areas that were more affected. So when we see those jobs starting to come back quickly, you'll rebound a little bit faster. So you see that um, in accommodation and food service with a 7.5% rebound over this next year, um, and then um, health social uh, healthcare, of course, is, continues to grow. Uh, retail trade showing some pretty good growth. But let's take a look at the wages. So uh, your average wage is almost 45000 uh, Education, a little bit above that, but notice because of the part-time workers, 23000 for accommodation and food service, 
And then below that retail trade, again, some part-time, 26,000. Arts and entertainment is pretty high, but professional, scientific, technical services, that's the sector that's been growing in your region. And look at the wage there, 78,000. So that's had a very positive impact on your region. Another high wage um, is uh, finance and insurance at 134,000. A couple more things to point out here. Location quotient is how um, concentrated this industry is in your region relative to the nation. So if it's greater than one, you're more concentrated. We say you have a competitive advantage because it's easier to attract other like firms because you already have the suppliers, you have the educators, you have the workforce. And here you see education, um, nearly three, so much more concentrated in the city than in the nation. Accommodation and food service because of tourism is also very high. And arts and entertainment, again, because of tourism is also very high. Um, here we're just showing the five-year employment change. And then uh, these last columns are showing you a forecast. So the way to read this is if we go all the way to the end, let's go to accommodation and food services, because we're seeing a rebound uh, due to COVID, um, that is the COVID recession being over, we're gonna need 213 more people um, because of growth in accommodation and food service. Uh, in the second last or the third last column, um, two, you're gonna need an additional 253 people to work in this industry because some people are leaving and going into another industry. And then the exit column, I'm trying to get my cursor there, 201 people are retiring and leaving. So in total, you're gonna need 667 people next year alone in the, um, in the accommodation and food services industry. So again, your growth rate, um, very strong next year, this four quarters forward as we come out of the COVID. However, when we look at the long run, um, something very different. So based on your current industry mix, some of the um, demographics and history of your region, we're looking for just a slight contraction, 0.1% uh, in terms of employment. Now, of course, when Michelle does a great job and brings in some of those, some of those um, um, expanding firms that are um, not currently in this mix, then that number will turn positive. But for the U.S. overall, we're looking at something around 0.4% um, employment growth on average each year for the next 10 years. So again, similar information to what you saw before, but now we're just looking at a long-term growth rate uh, rather than a one-year um, COVID rebound. Uh, now, industries are what we look at mostly as economists, and that's the information that's most updated, but it's really occupations that are important to your growth and what kind of skills do your people have. And so what I did is I looked at all the 820 occupations that the Bureau of Labor Statistics tracks, and we looked at the top 20 in terms of the number. So I highlighted in blue where you could see healthcare has an impact in terms of the top 20, uh, 337 registered nurses um, and 142 nursing assistants. Uh, if we look though, you can see the accommodation and food service and the tourism having an impact um, on the top um, jobs in terms of um, number of people employed at this point in the city of Williamsburg. Uh, so with that, I wanted to try to end on something very positive here. So if you haven't seen this um, article, I would suggest that um, you Google COVID-19 won't change us forever, written by Ken Budd with The Atlantic. Um, it's a very short um, blog, but very, I think, uplifting. Um, where he pointed out that within three years after 9-11, the airline industry set records for passengers. Uh, the 1918 pandemic was followed by the Roaring Twenties. And then in 1919, after the flu pandemic killed almost 700,000 Americans, we saw baseball set attendance records. We rebuild after disasters. Here are some examples. And I think we've all heard of um, post-traumatic stress disorder, but there's something called post-traumatic growth where people thrive after enduring life-changing events. And so with that, I am happy to try to take some questions. Well, thank you, Chris, as always, uh, excellent analysis. Um, 
two takeaways for me. One is that the long-term goals that we've had of higher wages and more diversification probably have happened over the last decade heading into uh, COVID, so that's good news. Uh, but then the industries that we count on uh, most, even still, uh, tourism, dining, uh, retail, and arts and entertainment have, have obviously been hit very hard. Um, at this time, if you uh, want to raise your hand, if you have a question, or you can enter it in the chat box, um, then Chris and I can both see the chat box so we can address those questions. Um, Chris, just really short term, um, this summer, uh, a lot of pent-up demand. Uh, people weren't able to travel. People weren't able to eat out. Um, our destination is a great spot for those and a lot of outdoor opportunities for um, museums and uh, entertainment. Any predictions on this summer season that's so critical to the Williamsburg area? Yeah, I, if, if our predictions are right about the um, uh, when we're going to see herd immunity, I would think that you would have a, a really good summer this year. Um, people aren't um, wanting to get in planes, but rather um, travel by car. And I think that um, given your location is, again, going to mean that you're probably going to have some very, very good um, um, uh, visitor numbers, um, especially as we get to the second half of the summer. Um, excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, we hope you're right. <laughs> yes. Uh, one of our bankers asks, uh, do you have any predictions for interest rates for the rest of the year? We've seen uh, interest rates tick up a little bit, particularly on the 10 year, which affects mortgages. Um, maybe it's gone too far too fast, but um, a lot rests. Um, residential has done well in this area um, and continues to do well nationally. But any thoughts about where interest rates are headed in the short to medium term? Yeah, so they, they really did pop um, recently. And it's interesting. Um, um, we we um, provide our forecast to the blue chip financial forecasters. And I was talking to someone who was purchasing a house later this year and had and was wondering, are rates going to go up? And so I went to look at the 50 forecasters. And no one on that list um, predicted what happened in the past week. And I was um, explaining to this person, it's very difficult to forecast interest rates. You know, they typically will just, um, you know, you'll see a run up. Um, and of course, with the, the um, stimulus, there's some concern. Did we, do we really need it at this point in time? Is it going to lead to inflation uh, later on down the road? The Fed feels that it can contain things, um, but I'm, I'm a little nervous. Um, so we don't have the Fed increasing the federal funds rate anytime soon, which is what they told us. But um, having, you know, been looking at or having been predicting interest rates, um, certainly back through the 1990s, I remember when Greenspan one, um, one month said, there's, uh, you know, this economy is growing slow. We don't expect to increase interest rates um, much. And within the next 12 months, interest rates were up 300 basis points, the federal funds rate. So our forecast is that they stay fairly low. They inch up a little bit because of inflation, but we don't see a spike. We don't see the continued spike that we just saw over the past couple of weeks. Great, thank you very much. We have a question, what is driving technical growth? I, I think they mean that growth in the technical uh, jobs that you had described. What's driving that growth in our area? Do you have a sense of that? Uh, the professional business services, um, so yes, we've seen it, um, professional business services would be things like architects, uh, lawyers, uh, consultants, um, bookkeepers, um, accounting. So accounting has seen some pretty good growth as well as just general growth, um, across those other, uh, sectors. And certainly having office space is a big plus in terms of attracting more of those type of high paying jobs. Uh, can you say anything about certain industries that may provide greater leverage for growth in the support jobs? Uh, obviously, when you look at the top jobs in Williamsburg, heavily dependent on food and food service. Are there other industries where we have opportunities for to leverage growth? 
um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're coming, or whoever's asking the question is coming from the perspective of the multiplier. So different industries have different multipliers. Um, manufacturing has the biggest multipliers because they use a lot of supplies and other things. And vehicle manufacturing, the multiplier is about four. So for every one job in vehicle manufacturing, you create three more. Um, professional services, I would say not as much because if you think about it, um, they're, they've got paper and pens and that's, it's not a lot of supply that um, uh, a ripple effect. Uh, food and beverage, uh, food services, entertainment, I would say would have a, a bigger multiplier than um, uh, the office sector type of jobs. But um, office IT jobs all pay high wages, which means that those people are going to be spending more money in the restaurants nearby uh, within the city. So there's definitely a big positive there. And our area is a little different than many of the other areas that you cover, of course, because we're so dependent on influx of people coming in and spending money in our area rather than uh, local demand. Uh, Von Gilbreth uh, asked the question, your thoughts on the mother of all stimulus packages um, and the multiplier effect of the $1.9 trillion package that looks uh, like it's gonna get through uh, Congress and to the president's desk. What impact will that have locally here on on Waynesburg and Greater Peninsula area. Yeah, I, I think that once we have the time when we can get out and spend, um, it's going to see a, you're going to have a, a bigger impact, or it's going to some of that money is going to flow to you, maybe more so than um, to other areas. Um, and what studies have or surveys have found is that a lot of people are either saving that money and. The, or using a little bit of it to pay down that debt. So they're saving the money right now because there's really nothing to spend it on. Um, and so um, I, I think that will um, benefit your region um, greatly when we get later into the summer. Are there any other questions? Do we have any hands raised? There are no hands raised right now. Great. Well, um, we have a lot of good folks on the line. I hope that that uh, was helpful to you. There's some really detailed charts in uh, your presentation that I think city council even will want to dig into when you look at the number of jobs, uh, where they're coming from and where the growth will be going forward. So your data is, as usual, um, very helpful and uh, we'll look forward to digging into that. So uh, we will share the slides. Uh, they'll be available on the website going forward. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for your time, your expertise. Um, obviously, you have a national and regional perspective, but uh, really also appreciate your digging down into our local statistics and providing some really good targeted information for us. So, as always, we appreciate your expertise and we look forward to continuing to hear from you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, uh, we'll turn it over to Michelle DeWitt for our EDA Minute. Um, our staff has spent a tremendous amount of time this winter. Uh, our team has done a great job of providing access to many different uh, grant programs. And Michelle, if you'll uh, highlight what's going on with your office, that would be great. Thank you, Rick, happy to. And thank you, Chris, for that presentation. I know um, it's always good to see that our diversification efforts, which I've been here 15 years working on that, it's nice to see those show up in the chart. Well, we know we still have more to do, it, it's nice to see that. Um, I have a slide to share with everyone with three things I just wanted to point out today. So I will share my screen, bear with me. And the first one is, um, yes, Williamsburg.com is your place to find a lot of information if it's 1 a.m. and probably not a good time to call one of us on the phone. <laughs> Feel free to go to our website. There's a lot of good information there. If it's, if it's not 1 a.m., it's a normal time. Feel free to call us as well. Um, so I wanted to point out three things as you see. One is that Start Peninsula, which is our annual um, business plan pitch contest um, that we've been doing for, for many years. Um, this year it has evolved. Um, of course, it's all happening virtually. And the first micro, there's gonna be a series of micro pitches. The first one will be March 18th at 6 p.m. So you can see the website there, startpeninsula.com to sign up. Um, this is the first round for people to pitch their business idea, and if, they, um, if they're a winner there, they get to go to the bigger pitch later in the year with, for a chance to win money for the concept. If you're not quite ready to pitch March 18th, which is right around the corner, 
Um, the second micro pitch is coming up April 21st. And I think there's a pitch perfect. So we have these pitch perfect events that you sign up and you can practice your pitch. So go to the website, you can find out when, when it's time to, to pitch for practice and pitch for real um, to get invited to the final, um, final event. And then home-based business is something we're, we're always concentrating on and we've relaunched the Lunch and Learn series. And the first session will be uh, March 10th, which is tomorrow at noon. And it's preparing your home-based business for the post-pandemic world. Um, so if you or anyone you know um, is in that, has a home-based business or is interested in, in learning about this, please tune in. That website is HBB, which stands for home-based business, conference.com. And lastly, this is something I've mentioned um, for the past many months. We have a small business investment grant and it now is online. So you can fill out the form by going to yeswilliamsburg.com backslash SBIG. And that is a grant that if you're doing exterior improvements, outdoor improvements um, to your business, we, we can match as the EDA up to $7,500. We can pay half of the cost. Um, it is a reimbursement grant. Um, you do need to apply before you start doing the work um, because you do need to get two bids. But um, give us a call, check that out. We'd love to, to help our businesses invest by, by paying half those costs. Um, other than that, I'll turn it back to you, Rick. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you uh, to you and Yuri and Joanna for all that you're doing uh, to support our businesses. A couple of other things. Uh, we hope that you'll continue to support local businesses, uh, particularly our uh, tourism partners. Many of the restaurants have made it through the winter on local support, and we really appreciate that. We hope that you'll continue, uh, as well as shopping retail uh, locally, and continue to support our businesses through the crisis, uh, particularly uh, this spring and into the summer. Uh, next month, we've had a lot of discussion about how businesses would uh, utilize and access the students and expertise that William and Mary, and we want to uh, continue to build that partnership that we built through the incubator. Uh, so we'll have Kathleen Powell, who's the Associate Vice President for Career Development, uh, and uh, Renard Miles, who's the Director of Employer Engagement for William & Mary from the Career uh, Center. They'll be our guests to talk about how do you uh, jump over the brick wall, how do you find students, uh, how do you find employees, uh, how can you take advantage of all the resources that are at the college, but particularly how can we continue to keep some of the brain power uh, in our community and, and continue to attract and retain the students at William & Mary to stay in the area and be involved in our community and our economy. So that's on Tuesday, April 13th at noon, which will be our next Economic Development Roundtable. Um, in the interim, we hope that you will enjoy the spring uh, as things open up. Uh, all of us look forward to getting back outside, dining, and enjoying our community. So make it a great day to do business in Waynesburg. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for your continued support.